I left my vegetable garden and greenhouse for a few weeks to do a summer vacation in Portugal and Spain. I set an automatic water for three weeks during the peak growing season. Mm. Is it possible to leave your garden to come back for a full harvest? How did the garden and greenhouse fare while I was gone? Check this video out and you'll see. Good day, my fellow permates. It is Sunday, middle of August, and time for a vacation. I've set up the whole garden on an automatic watering system. And before I leave to Spain and Portugal for three weeks, I'll show you what it looks like. So, the blackberries are in season. I've enjoyed the first few weeks of Nice summer blackberries. Man, they taste good. Oh, they're so good. I'm gonna be so sad to miss these guys. Here is the IBC tote that will hopefully water the entire vegetable garden while I'm gone. Just filled it up. It's about a thousand liters, or I think, what, 250 gallons. And I've got it set to water every 12 hours for 10 minutes. And I've been measuring for a whole day. This was every segment is 12 hours for 15 minutes. And it was a bit too much water. I calculated how long I would have for three weeks. Not enough water for the whole vacation. So the garden's gonna have to do with 10 minutes every 12 hours. I've just cleared all the pathways through the walnut trees, by the creek and the blackberry bushes, through the stinging nettle. I'm giving the vegetable garden one last thorough watering. And then these babies will all be drinking from the hose. I guess from the drip system. So this is what it looks like three weeks before I get back from my vacation. I've got the uh, some cantaloupes coming in. I've got the red cabbage coming in. The kale is nicely nicely headed up. Um, the squash, summer squashes are just starting to spread out. So I expect by the time I get back, those will be nice and full. I've got some zucchinis that unfortunately I'll miss when I get back, but I've got a neighbor, or well, two neighbors, that I've told they can come pick them if they want. Uh, the red and white onions. Well, here's a nice squash coming in. That'll be nice and big when I get back. I've got some onions, white onions, and some red onions coming in and a bunch of tomatoes. Look at that cluster here. The tomatoes are doing really well here. A lot of sun, um, really enjoying it. And before I leave, which is a nice little surprise, I've got some grape tomatoes to eat on my journey west. So here we go, look at all these tomatoes. It's so nice to see. Uh, I've just watered the uh, fruit trees and we'll see what this looks like in three weeks. I'm really interested because um, this is the first time I've set up an automatic watering system like this. And I'll tell you, it was a lot of work. Uh, it was expensive too to set up the system in both the greenhouse and out here. It was over a thousand dollars. Well, thousand euros uh, so it's not cheap but I hear it's a good investment to make investment for time really and so that I can take vacation every once in a while it's been a while since I've been on the road and the family and I are gonna head out and we'll be back in September um, so I'll do a a quick tour of the watering system in the greenhouse and just show a before and after of both the greenhouse and the vegetable garden. 
as I walk to the greenhouse, I'll show you our fig tree. We just had our first harvest, so all you see left is the second harvest that'll come in. And by the time we get back, I'm hoping these will be nice and ripe. Planted a Gamay grape, which is the local grape. And here is the watering system. The drip hose goes all the way through, also to our kiwi plants. We've got a male and a female. And they've just thrown out the second, um, the second leaves, the second buds. So they're excited about the drip system. We've got it going to the cactus pear, the rosemary, and the lemon balm, which has gone to seed. Yep. All right, so this is the second IBC tote. You'll note that it's actually a little bit greener than the other one because I left it uncovered for two days. And there's some photosynthesis going on in there. Not good. So I'm going to cover it up before we leave. Um, I had this one set at 24 hours every um, 20 minutes. Right now it's off, but it was a bit too much. Uh, the greenhouse floor was getting flooded. Uh, so we'll go in there and check out the watering system. But yeah, I'm really hoping this will sustain through the European summer for three weeks. We'll see. So this is the greenhouse looking pretty lush. Uh, we've got some strawberries coming in, um, a few orchids, some trees that I've planted. This is the pond stock. So we've got some um, lily pads, papyrus, just some miscellaneous indoor plants I've all brought out here. Um, a tomato plant all on the drip irrigation. Got the herbs, some basil and sage. Oh, <laughs> so when I did the first test run, I left for a weekend that idea because I had forgot to take out the plugs from the water. So this filled up with water. And if you know anything about rosemary, rosemary hates being soaked. So unfortunately, I think I lost my rosemary bush. The fight with rosemary continues. But nonetheless, everything else is doing well. The thyme, more strawberries, purple basil, uh, we've got the oregano and some mint, and a few cactus and succulents. Yeah, so I'll be back in three weeks time in the beginning of September, and I'll uh, do a comparison video. See you then. beginning of September and I'm back from vacation. It was truly an amazing vacation in Spain and Portugal, but now it's time to check out what the garden and the greenhouse have been doing for the past three weeks. Look at all of the growth in the greenhouse, wanted and unwanted. Look at that basil. Got some tomatoes coming in. What do I mean by unwanted? Well. There are lots of weeds. 
I don't really like the term weeds because a lot of weeds are edible and some weeds have medicinal properties. This is dandelion greens and we can eat these. This is a blade grass, not good for eating. As I told you in the last video, this is the rosemary. It got soaked and well, yeah, it didn't come back. But the greenhouse is thriving. This rose bloomed for the first time. We've got a ton of mint, oregano, the purple basil is blooming. We've got some strawberries. Look at that. And everything survived, all thanks to the drip system. So this is the greenhouse drip system here. I installed it right before I left and everything is really thriving in here. Even the, uh, even the pond stock plants are doing well. Got a little oak tree coming up. Really amazing what's, what's happened. All right, so um, the only victim of being away was some bamboo shoots that I planted. I had them underneath the drip and the drip was, I believe, 10 minutes every 24 hours and it just got too much. Um, the mornings, when, it do, when the drip does come, it kind of fills up with water. You can see there's a bit of an overflow. So, um, go out to the tank. Here's Parker. Uh, the tank still has about a quarter, uh, quarter of water left. So, about 75 gallons left. Um, yeah, you can see the in there, but I've already changed the, um, I've already changed the setting down to five minutes every 24 hours. So now we'll go out to the vegetable garden. On our way out, first I want to show you the figs. Indeed, the second harvest of figs is starting to come in. Most of them are still green, but still doing well. Here's the kiwis. They really enjoyed being on the dripper. And I haven't seen this kind of growth um, in a few months, so this is really cool. Parker, Parker's eating some. What are you eating, Parker? And also some growth on the grapevine. So the weather has really changed. So it's the beginning of the second week of September and I guess technically it's been four weeks since coming back from vacation. Um, I took a week off. The worst thing getting back from vacation is facing the cold hard reality of life. <laughs> so I took about a week, a week off, didn't do much to the garden, but I didn't have to do much to the garden because everything was on a drip system. Um, just had to make some adjustments, but you know, I didn't have to come home and water everything because everything is still, still being watered. Um, and as soon as we got back, it started to rain again. I was watching the weather a little bit on vacation and I saw that there were a few weeks without rain and I also saw that I was getting kind of hot. So I was a bit concerned. Um, you can see some of the grass here has gotten pretty dry. Um, walking around, it looks like I may have lost one or two plants, but other than that, everything did, did pretty well. Uh, but I haven't had to do much out here because it's been raining almost every day and it started to get cool. So I really think autumn is setting in a little early and it might be a cold winter. We'll see. I'm gonna pick this guy. really quite ready but mm. 
that's good. Okay, as we walk out to the vegetable garden, um, yeah, another downside of having a vacation in August and September is you do miss part of the harvest. So blackberries pretty much all gone or dried up. So I was able to pick a few of the last of the season's blackberries. Oh, here's a few more. But you can see they're a little bit smaller and mostly dried up. So I missed that. Um, I just checked the IBC tote for the vegetable garden and indeed it is empty. Um, I did cover it in this tarp because it was getting a lot of sun and the water was turning green. So not good to have algae growing in your in your water. Um, the walnut trees, the walnuts have started to crack, so time to harvest or else they'll get all, they might get all moldy with this rain. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I, the first thing I did when I got home is to come check the garden. So it's not gonna be a big reveal of, whoa, look at all these tomatoes and look at all the onions, you know. I've already seen everything. But there are a lot of tomatoes to harvest. And yeah, the garden is, well, I'll show you. Pretty, uh, pretty wild. We've got a lot of squash coming in. Um, I will tell you that there have been, I mean, it's been a slug buffet since I've been gone. So slugs have like quadrupled in population. So there's slug damage everywhere. I mean, they're eating, they're eating all the squash. They're just, they're going to town and I'll show, show some of it to you. So here's a kale. I mean, look at these guys. There's just slugs everywhere. This is all slug damage on the cabbage cabbage really got hit so check this out this is just a slug slug buffet so I'll probably have to pick these early because they got hit so hard um, but the positive of everything is that there's just so much growing that I will have still a lot um, to harvest so there's a lot of kale have a few um, onions to pick I've got a bunch of um, Oof. I better pick these. Got a bunch of um, squash to pick. It looks like this. You'll see this kind of rupture line if it rain. If it is a period of dry and then all of a sudden rain. So um, I've got to keep an eye on these because that could get damaged even further. Um, still a lot of kale to eat. Got some more. Um, wow. So yeah, that's what happens when you let a zucchini squash grow to full, its full potential. But look at all these slugs. Like, look at this. Slugs. Here's another zucchini squash that's just gotten massive. Look at that. Look at that guy. I'll pick it up for you. There's a little spider keeping it company. So we've got a bunch of squash coming in. Um, got some green peppers, uh, more squash, and all of these onions I really need to pick. So look at this, this is a group of onions that we can pick right now actually. So I've got one, two, Three, four, wow, five. Look at all these onions. And then another group over here. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> nice. It's a freaking treasure hunt over here. And then more onions to pick down that row. 
And look at all of these tomatoes. Oh my goodness. Okay. And there's even more coming in. Got some bugs going to town. Got some old tomatoes. Okay, look at this. So, got some tomato damage here. Just pick that, get rid of that. And the rest we can eat. Yep. A lot of tomatoes going on. But yeah, it's wild out here. So, yeah, things, things are still growing and growing well, but it's just all, all over the place and the slugs have really done a lot of damage but overall not too bad um yeah i gotta get ready for for winter now um yesterday i picked i would say 10 pounds of apples so that's probably mostly it for the apples we might get another bag five pound bag um but i want to get a winter garden ready and I might, let's see, gotta figure out where I wanna put it. I could go up here. I think I'll probably go up here. So, I think I'll pick this area, do a plot here, and then a plot here. Maybe even, whoa, maybe even a third plot here. We'll see. Cool. Well, I hope that shows you that you can take vacations as a gardener when you set up an automatic watering system. And if you've got animals, you've got cool neighbors that'll come take care of the goats. Um, yeah, the goats are fine. Uh, the fish are fine. The dog is fine. So Spain and Portugal were great. It was awesome to see for a first time and great to come back to this harvest so I'll do some uh, do some harvesting and then show you at the very end the, t the bounty Okay, harvest is over. I got a ton of fruits. And I got a crap ton of vegetables. Look at this. This is probably, I don't know. Holy crap. Yeah, 10 pounds, tomatoes, four different varieties. Look at that dude. I've got eight onions, two little red cabbage, and some squash. And still more to harvest in the coming weeks as I begin my winter garden. All right, see you guys next time. Keep it real.